Now the next type of volume that we want to see is elastic block storage from AWS. AWS Elastic Block Store. Now this volume helps you to retain the data and it is also saved from the node outage. However, this type of volumes are provided by the cloud service providers. To define the AWS Elastic Block Store, it's exactly the same. Instead of host path or empty directory, you specify that your volume is AWS Elastic Block Store. The file type is ext4 and the volume ID is the actual volume ID from the AWS console. Pick it up, paste it here. You are good. Your pod is attached to the EBS volume on AWS. There are a lot of challenges. With empty directory, still if formal goes off, if pod goes off. Host path, what if pod gets rescheduled on another node? What if node goes down? And who takes care of creating and managing actual directories on the node? It might get full at some point of time. So there is a lot of maintenance there. If I have to use AWS Elastic Block Store, who is going to create the volume in AWS? So somebody has to first create the volume, take the volume ID, and then put it inside your pod. All this is there, but still not practical. So what we need is some detachable storage allocation. Different types of storage that can be attached to your pod in a self-service manner. So I ask for it and I get my volume attached to my pod. To achieve this, in Kubernetes, there are two new API resources, persistent volume and persistent volume claim. These two new resource type abstracts how the storage is provided and how the storage is consumed. So these are the two parts of it. Persistent volume tells actual how the storage is provided and persistent volume claim is the one which defines how your storage is getting consumed. Persistent volume represents the actual volume with the details of the actual physical storage. It is provisioned by administrator or dynamically provisioned using storage class. The life cycle is independent of any individual pod that is using your persistent volume. So that's persistent volume. Persistent volume claim represents the request for storage by a user, which means by a pod. It abstracts the storage resource without exposing details of how those volumes are implemented. Claims are fulfilled by PV. So when you try to claim for a storage, they are fulfilled or bound by the persistent volume and hence persistent volume claim are linked to persistent volume. So to understand, I have a lot of persistent volume and they are attached to the pod and to attach to the pod, we use PVC, which is claim your storage. I have a node running a pod and container inside the pod. I have a persistent volume, which is created somewhere. Now, I have a persistent volume claim which binds this persistent volume to my pod and makes it available as volume. And this volume is mounted inside my container using volume mount attribute. So we are looking at right now persistent volume descriptor YAML. So the kind is persistent volume. This file represents the physical storage. Another part of the persistent volume is storage class name, which is used to find actual persistent volume for the claims. And the final part inside my persistent volume is the actual storage. In this case, I am using host path. Since I am using my virtual box, I can have actual AWS Elastic Block Storage, which is representing the actual storage on AWS. The persistent volume claim descriptor looks like this. I have a kind which is persistent volume claim. Again, the storage class name, used to map the persistent volume. Let's look at this file against each other. The resource requested is specified in the persistent volume claim. The persistent volume, which can fulfill the request, has to be a matching capacity or higher capacity. Lower capacity will not be fulfilled. Another part which is very important is storage class name. The persistent volume claim of the storage class can be fulfilled by the 
persistent volume of the same storage class empty value is also a match so if you don't have any storage class specified in your persistent volume claim it can match to a persistent volume with empty storage class and that way it can be bound together now how to use pvc in your pod so in your volume instead of specifying host path or aws elastic block store you specify that i want to fulfill this volume by persistent volume claim and attach this persistent volume claim to my pod the name of the persistent volume claim is my pvc and the rest part is same so the name of the volume maps to the name of the volume mount there are other properties available for persistent volume reclaim policy reclaim policy defines what to do with the volume after it has been released of its claim the first value is retain which means the actual volume is retained in the base infrastructure even after pvc and pv is deleted and the volume is considered released allows for manual reclamation of resource later the most popular type is delete delete removes the persistent volume along with the actual physical storage this is very common and default for dynamic allocation that is storage class so if you release the persistent volume claim the actual storage will get deleted unless you change the type to retain there was one more recycle which was used before and it is deprecated now you can read more about persistent volume retain policy on kubernetes documentation another property is access mode there are three types of access mode read write once the volume can be mounted as read write by single node read only many which means the volume can be mounted read only by multiple nodes read write many this volume can be mounted as read write by many nodes the volume can be mounted by only one access mode at a time now let's see the pv and pvc demo in action i do cube ctl get pv i don't have any pv there which is persistent volume and persistent volume claim in this two window i am constantly watching pv and pvc and my standard pod watch let's see the file pv so the persistent volume that i am creating name of the persistent volume my pv remember the storage class name as manual and this is host path pvc again storage class name as manual and the requested storage is 300 mb my pv type is 500 mb so the first part that i have to do is create this directory on my nodes right i'll create this on all nodes because i don't know where my pod is going to get scheduled i'm going to create one file node 1 index.html So I have index.html created on all the nodes. So let me start with first creating my PVC. We'll see that PVC is created, but the status is pending because I don't have any persistent volume that it can bound to. As soon as I make the PV available. my pvc got bound to the persistent volume to fulfill the claim i need to have a persistent volume available let's look at the pod definition first so pod is standard nginx pod where i am using my persistent volume claim my pvc and mounting it to serve the index.html or http server the pod is created if i look at the kubectl describe pod so if you notice here and if you look at container the mount point is user shared nginx html now one trick that i want to show is if i want to connect to pod from my host machine i can use one of the feature of port forwarding 
I go to browser, so if I go to localhost 8080, I can see that I am connected to node one. If I go here, if you notice, this pod is running on k test node one. So that's how I got my persistent volume bound to my persistent volume claim, which is used inside my pod. Let's do one thing. Let's delete all of this. So I deleted everything, gone. I'll go in the reverse order. I'll start with first creating a pod. So let's see what happens by describe. Pod is in pending state. It's not getting ahead of that, right? If I see here, it says that persistent volume claim not found. Let's create the PVC. Still in pending state. However, let's go to describe. It says that running volume on, but pod is doesn't have any PV to fulfill. Create PVC. Get bound to my PVC and then container uh, the pod moving into container creating state. I have my pod running, which is my web server. It's just a simple Nginx uh, server using my PVC which is attached to my PV. Let me just do the port forwarding. When I try to hit index.html, I'm saying node 2, which is the node on which my web server is running. Now, let me delete the pod. Pod is gone. PVC and PV is still there. If I redeploy the pod, it'll connect to the same PV using the same PVC. I have my pod running again connected to the same PV and PVC. Let me just do the port forwarding. Reload working fine. Now let me delete the pod. Let me delete my PVC as well. Well, PV is still there because my type is retained. I go ahead and apply my PVC again. This time, if you notice, it could not connect to the previous PV because it was in the release state. I have to go ahead and create a, another PV to make it available for my PVC. So I'll go ahead, my PV2, I'll just give the different name. As soon as I create this my PV2, it is available and now it is bound to my PVC. Whereas you have to remember that my previous PV was not used. Now if I go and deploy my pod, it's coming on KTS node 2. Good, working fine. Let me do the port forwarding. Done. Reload, working fine. So important point here to remember is that PVC and PV are the connections and once one PV is used with one PVC it will not get reused. Now it's time for exercise. In exercise 8 we are going to create PV and PVC for our MongoDB database host path. However instead of defining it direct host path we'll go via PV and PVC.